Hey everybody, um, welcome back for uh, the next episode of Using Emacs. I can't believe we're up to 35 episodes now. I had no idea it would go this far. We'll see uh, see how long it goes. Um, so what I thought I would talk about today was um, only a very minor part of the configuration of Emacs, but I wanted to show you how I went about um, creating my blog, uh, just the workflow I have for that, and um, what I'm moving to now. Uh, so to start with, um, if you looked at the posts, so my blog is here, and um, nothing exciting, it's just you know a blog. And it's uh, generated using Nicola as a static site generator. And um, I blogged about why I made that change a while back, and I'll link to that in the post. But uh, but basically, I used to use Jekyll, and Jekyll is really kind of nice. Uh, with Jekyll, it's a static site generator, it uses a pretty simple markdown to work um, and it works well with github pages but the problems that i had i had two problems with um with jekyll one is it uses its own markdown i forget if i ever figured out how to get that working with org mode or not but but it really supports its own markdown and um i had been moving everything to um over to org mode. I'm using as much org mode markdown as possible for my markdown related needs, for my document preparation, web preparation needs. And the other thing is that it's all, um, it's it's Ruby. And I don't do Ruby. I'm not really comfortable or familiar with Ruby. And I was having some issues with um, using, uh, you know, keeping the Ruby, you know, the Ruby build system, making sure I had the right versions of everything and all that. Um, and so I found, so, um, so I looked for alternatives and I found Nicola. And Nicola was really nice for a few reasons. Uh, one, it was written in Python, and I'm very comfortable with the Python ecosystem, and so that was nice. And then the second thing is it has all these plugins for different things. Um, and I use a couple of plugins, but one is this org mode plugin, which lets you um, use org mode for to compose your posts now I'm not going to talk about all the ins and outs of setting up Nicola for a blog if people want me to do a little sub series on that uh, please leave a comment and um, you know if people want me to do that I will certainly do that um, but basically the way Nicola works is you have your your Nicola site here and I have a directory called posts that has all of my posts in it. Um, and you'll notice the Emacs backup files or whatever. And what I would do is, um, this is the way I would originally do my posting, my, my, my blogging, is um, I would do basically Nicola, and this won't work here, why not? Because Nicola is not installed, because I don't have Nicola installed on my main environment. Um, Python has this thing called virtual environments, and what it lets you do is it lets you um, run a particular version of Python with whatever libraries and modules you want and keep it in a self-contained unit. And so I've also got something called virtual env wrapper, which um, I think I do. Virtual, well, let's see, um, I thought it was LSENV. No, it isn't. So I can work on, and I'll just hit tab here. And I've got these different um, virtual environments that I can work on, and each one is a whole set of libraries and whatever. Um, and so I can work on blog, and that one has Nicola installed on it. And what I would do is I would type in Nicola new post, and then I would say post, and I'd be like using Emacs 30... Um, Notice that I started this the other day, but then I messed up the video, so I'm redoing this now. Uh, 35blogging.org. And it would ask me for a title, like the blog title. And then I would go EC posts blogging, uh, using Emacs 35, blogging. Dot org, And it would bring up Emacs EC because I'm running the Emacs client. Um, but basically, and it would bring me up. It would bring me up this slug, which would let me. Um, this is my title, and I. Now this is. Whoops. I can't type this morning. This is a section and or blogging, etc. You know, I can do my uh, uh, Python uh, for I in whatever. I don't even know. I, whatever, and I can save my file here, and I can put this in the background, and I can type Nicola Auto, let's say, and Nicola Auto basically just runs 
runs on my local host. And then here's my blog post, etc. I'll kill this for now. I'll kill this for now. And um, do I still have Emacs running? Yes. I think I've exited that. Um, let's kill this buffer for um, just so it doesn't get confused in a minute. And then when I'm done, I would like Nicola GitHub deploy, and it would send it up to GitHub. So um, I'm going to deactivate, leave my virtual environment, and just go into posts. And let's just get rid of using Emacs 35. Let's just get rid of these files here, just, just to have a clean slate. So that's how I would do my blogging, whether it were in Jekyll with Markdown, slightly different commands, or if I would do it in Nicola uh, with org mode, is I would just use the Nicola tool to create my file, go into Emacs, do it, etc. And But I wanted to work more within Emacs all the time, and so I moved to a different um, a slightly different workflow, so I'll just bring up Emacs here. Let's just make sure, yes, the key. I just wanted to see what a keystroke window was. And um, I'll even close this. And so what I would do is I would type in, you know, I'd go to the E shell, and then in here I would, I would work on blog to work on that virtual environment. Um, so notice here I'm in that environment, and then I could type Nicola new post. I'm not actually going to do it now, I'll just type Nicola to show that it works. And I would do kind of the same thing, but within here, uh, the problem with this is um, it didn't really improve the performance, it just meant my shell was in Emacs as opposed to not being within Emacs. Um, and it was okay, and I did that for a while. But um, more recently, I found a, a tool called, um, called Prodigy. And so we can just look this up here, Emacs Prodigy. And what it does, it lets you run services, and I'll show this to you, from within Emacs, it kind of contains it a little bit. And so what I did, what I'll do now is, let's say I want to work on, let me just actually exit this, I don't need this here. Let's say I'm working on a new post. I set things up a little bit different now. So actually, before I even do that, going into my configuration file, here is how I configured Prodigy, and it says, look, I'm using the Prodigy package, I have one service, and that is run the command Nicola, with the uh, arguments auto, so Nicola auto, like I did from the command line before, in this directory, and that's pretty much it. So what I would do is if I wanted to make a new blog post, I'm not gonna run um, Nicola new post like I did from the command line. Um, I like that because it gave me the slug, but what I did instead is, so now what I'll do is I'll go into projectile, control C, P, P, and I'll change into this, um, this project, and I made a file, I copied this over. I'm still not entirely sure I want this right, doing this right now, but this is just kind of where I'm keeping various ideas for blog posts. As you see there, I have a lot of ideas, but I never seem to get around to writing them. Um, but now let me just go to a new file, posts using Emacs 35 blogging.org, and I hit post tab, and I have to clean this up just a little bit, but I'll do that in a minute. Um, I also have my slug in the wrong, my, my mark in the wrong place. Um, you know, I'm using a YA snippet, which I covered in an earlier Python video. Um, I think it was in a Python video for using Emacs for Python. Um, and I can type in my tags and bang them down here. I have to change this a little bit for a few reasons. One is it's blogging, not blogging. Um, uh, one of the reasons is I, w I don't want my editing point to be here. I don't want to edit the slug. I really want to be able to edit up here. Except now what I can do is now I can, here's my blog post, and I can start writing it. But um, the cool thing about Prodigy is I can from within Emacs, and this didn't work at first, and it may not work now either. I can go to Prodigy. I have not bound that to a key yet. But I can type S to start the service. And now if I go to a local host 8000, um, let's save that file. And I'm not sure why this is not showing up where it is, where it should. Oh yeah, there we go, okay. Um, using Emacs blogging and like, uh, then I could be like, uh, 
I can put some stuff in here. This is one of the issues, by the way, with Nicola is the um, it doesn't support the new the newest version of the export, so I have to go back to to this uh, the older version of org mode marking that stuff and like like H1. Hello, I mean this is where I normally put the video. And if I come over here, this should hot reload, but I get impatient, so I always click the, uh, the reload page myself. Uh, oh, there we go. So there it hot reloads. That's kind of nice. Um, and if I want to stop the service, I can just come down here and I type hit capital S, and the service has been stopped. Now, this didn't run originally. The reason that it didn't run originally is because... Um, let me just quit out of this. If I go back to the configuration, you'll see that it just tries to run the command Nicola, and I have to be in my virtual environment because I never installed Nicola across the system. So what I actually had to do was um, the first time I loaded up Emacs, I had to make sure that I had the work on blog, I have virtual env installed for Emacs. Again, I did this in an earlier video. And once I have that, I can restart my Python process and then everything worked. And I, I'm going to play with this a little bit to see if I can just wrap that up and see if it'll uh, run the virtual environment and Nicola for me in a clean manner. But this seems to be a pretty good workflow now. So I can just be in Emacs. I can open the new file. I've got the slug, which I've got to tighten up just a little bit. And if we want to look at that, if we go to um, Emacs D, where is that story? Emacs D uh, snippets or post. Um, yeah, we'll see that this is the, um, I got the slug in the wrong place, so I really want this to be the slug, and this will just leave as that. So just make a little Y snippet, then for the tags, and then for the end. And I want to get rid of that. Uh, and that should do it, but I'll test this out a little bit later. Um, but now I can just use everything contained within Emacs, within, you know, go to the file, use the snippet to create the slug, run the service, stop the service. And then what I also put together, and I'm just playing with this now, is just a little Nicola deploy, which uses the then with virtual end. This comes with uh, the virtual end wrapper package. Um, I can run this command in the virtual environment blog, and I will shell this command. And again, this is not necessarily the cleanest way or the best way, but it's working under my environment for now until I figure out the cleaner ways of doing it. So anyway, this is the way that I've been blogging um, the last couple of posts. I'm kind of liking this workflow. Um, if you want me to do, um, you know, if you have any suggestions about Prodigy, um, I'm just kind of starting to learn it. Please leave it in the comments. If you have an alternative, a better way of using it, um, the documentation um, isn't the greatest of, dial, of pack for all packages. I, I don't really mean that as a criticism because um, I am so appreciative. If we go back to the site, um, I, I am so appreciative. You know, here we've got uh, who is the user? Is this the original user, um, uh, Rajiv, uh, of people who will put these packages together, who know how to code Emacs so much better than I do, and take the time to provide this for the world? Um, you know, and maybe if I knew a little bit more about the internals of some of this, I, I would. You know, it's actually pretty thorough here, but um, but I'm going to have to dive into the code to understand. Uh, what's really going on with all these options and everything, which I haven't done yet. Um, but it seems like a really cool package. I'm liking it in the workflow. And, um, you know, and again, also, if you want me to talk more about Nicola and how to set that up, I'm happy to do that. Um, let me know. Hope you've been enjoying all of these. And that's it for today.